Surat Swang is the executive director of the Providence Youth Student Movement. The office was the target of a hate crime. Knives were stabbed into the desk, equipment was rearranged, and there was a noose hanging from the ceiling. And one of the things that is extraordinary about Surat's story and the story of PRISM is that in the aftermath of the hate crime, they decided not to call the police because they are an abolitionist organization. They believe that much of the violence they experience comes not just at the hands of everyday people, but also at the hands of the state in the form of police brutality, immigration raids, war on terror, and the like. So as a consequence, why would they trust the police to investigate and respond to this hate incident when they experience so much violence at the hands of the police and the state? So a lot of his story is about what the community and what the organization did in the aftermath. Um, that includes taking self-defense classes, uh, a buddy check-in program, uh, a new neighborhood watch program. We're really doubling down on the neighborhood watch program and just continuing with the advocacy. You know, he feels that they were targeted targeted because of their advocacy in Providence, you know, calling for accountability to immigration raids, police violence and the like. Um, so it's really an extraordinary story and in many ways mirrors conversations that are happening across the country among activists. You know, to what extent can, be, can police and law enforcement be trusted in a moment like this? And to what extent should we rely on our own communities and on ourselves for things like community defense, safety and sanctuary and the like?